during Tuesday's plenary session in the Senate. Following a motion from the minority leader, the Senate resolved to urge President Muhammad Buhari to reconstitute the board of the Federal Character Commission, as any action to the contrary would be a breach of the act establishing the commission and the constitution. That the Federal Character Commission body as constituted has lapsed since 2018. Further away. The matter was also raised in the Green Chamber. The Federal Character Commission up till now is parading only one commissioner who now is the acting chairman and functions in place of the 36, 37 commissioners made provision for by the Enabling Act of this National Assembly. The House further mandated its Committee on Federal Character to ensure compliance. Democracy has come. Meanwhile, one of the bills listed for second reading seeks to alter the Constitution and provide immunity for presiding officers of legislative houses. In spite of uninterrupted concentration required for carrying out effective legislative duty, this institution has suffered serious destruction. While some lawmakers support the move, others condemn the timing and question its relevance. We do not need any immunity now. I am already personally, I'm already personally against the immunity currently enjoyed by the president and the governors. At this time in our nation, what is important is the provision of security to our people. I've talked about the political crime in this country, and you have suffered it in the past. If you remember correctly what I'm talking about, malicious prosecution. You were prosecuted maliciously. Uh, you can be a presiding officer tomorrow. The reason all the wisdom of the drafters of this constitution when they were doing it was to create a kind of shield, administrative shield, for head of executive's arm of government so that these officials of government may not be unnecessarily distracted from discharging their responsibility. For almost the entire part of the 8th Assembly, the President of the Senate was in and out of trial at the Code of Conduct Tribunal. This, the lawmakers say, was quite destabilizing for the National Assembly. They do not want to see a repeat of that. The bill has now hit the public hearing stage, and it would be interesting to hear the views of Nigerians on it. Terry Kumi, Channels Television News. So that's the topic for discussion. I mean, like you see on the front pages, there are different views to this. People even extrapolating and saying maybe the president and governors don't even need immunity at this point. Let's focus on security. So, so much to talk about. Uh, let's head over to Abuja, where Markwe has guests on standby to discuss this. Markwe. Standby to discuss this. Markwe. Thank you, Kaede. It's amazing. I mean, when you listen to the uh, opinion, the debate that went on on the floor of the House of Representatives, it looks like a lot of members uh, were not in support of it. So the question will be, how did it skill second reading? Uh, we have with us this morning Honorable Deacon Sergius Ogun, who is a former chairman, House Committee on FCT, uh, representing ASA Northeast, ASA North. Southeast. Southeast as well, uh, in Edo State. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you. We also have with us Honorable Uzoma Inkem Bonte, who used to be the Chairman House Committee on Public Petitions. Uh, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily as well. Thank you. Do you want to quickly tell us how this bill managed to scale second reading? Because listening to the plethora of opinions we had there, uh, it looks like a lot of people were saying this, this should not be our priority now. Oh, we are uh, in fact asking that we remove the immunity for governors and and, uh, and uh, the president as well, members of the executive. How come then did this bill skill second reading? Oh, well, if you ask me, I think um, I argued in favor of that bill mm -hmm. and um, a voiced vote um, we had and the speaker said the eyes heard it. You see, from the argument, um, a lot of persons argued against it. Mm -hmm. A lot also argued in favor of it. It depends on the argument. I think at the end of the day, I also want to believe that the eyes had it because um, uh, will I see that the superior points were had. What happened, actually, I'll tell you is, it's not good for us to look at issues and politicize issues. In the last assembly, those who argued up. in favor of it yeah. today argued against it because they felt they were not in power. They were not in authority. Let me be precise. During the House Dogara's time, 
these persons who argued in favor now argued against it. Today, they argued in favor. So the real thing is, do we really need immunity for the presiding officers in view of the prevailing circumstances for the simple reason that the institution must be independent, must function purely. That's the issue. So we should not argue in favor or against based on where we think we belong to. We should look at issues precisely. What is a superior argument then that has been put forward uh, to make this bill skill second reading? Ordinarily, time doesn't run against crime. Ordinarily, presiding officers should have enough courage, liberty, independence to function. I use Saraki's matter as a, a, a point in time. If you think you have any matter against Saraki, I go against him on the code or whatever. But the distraction he had impacted on the National Assembly. On so uh, supposing you don't have a president who likes or who is at par with the presiding officer. Right now we are told we are enjoying good rapport with presidency so we can progress. God, only God knows how we are progressing. Should there be a president who is not having that rapport, they will harass you unnecessarily. That's what Saraki suffered. If you are made to be in court on criminal matters every other day, even other person can even sue you, not even government persons. So how will you have the time and the courage to go on? We are simply saying, since the presidency is allowed, since the government is allowed not to be distracted, also allow the institution that checks them. Give them. And we're not saying total. You can do your investigation and keep your facts. Once he leaves us, pick him up. Mm. But if you allow them to bring harassment in the name of persecution or suit or criminal or whatever, that presidency may not have time to concentrate. And during Saraki time, it reduces our morale that you will dock the Senate president for whatever reason. He should answer for his crimes, actually. But why will he? Members will be waiting. What will be the outcome? Those who want on sitting will begin to cash on it. A whole lot of things. He may not concentrate. He will not be careful. If the watchdog is caged or sent on an errand, how will he watch? That's why I said, that's why I joined the people who agreed that immunity should be given, they, they, they should be clothed with immunity while in office, so they can preside. If a pastor is taken by the devil, then the, 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 the congregation will be scattered. Mm. So there should be some kind of uh, immunity and the pastor to so the devil will not infiltrate. That's what we're just asking. Not <laughs> the devil into. being the executive <laughs> or the judicial. Who exactly is the oh, devil well. in this case? But I, I, I'm wondering what your stance is. You've also been a member uh, of the House of Representatives. What is your stance on this? Do you think that this is what we should really be focusing on at this time? I don't think so. When uh, our colleague uh, read our view, I was the first to speak. I clearly asked, because usually you allow those four to speak and then those against. And I remember asking the speaker, I am for, I'm against it. Can I speak? He said, go ahead. And I clearly stated that. For me, it's not just for today. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that the president or even the governor and their deputies or vice should be given immunity. I do not believe it. So we are talking about extending it today to presiding officers in the legislative houses. Then tomorrow is going to be to Supreme Court, OBCGN, and all Supreme Court judges because one was attacked. Then after that, we'll go to service chiefs. Give to service chiefs, and then from there we'll go to businessmen that can afford to pay for it. So it should be immunity without end. Exactly. We don't need it. They don't even need it. That's my belief. Because after the debate, there were some people that were talking about, remember when, that, when I started the debate, some, some leaders said, look, we have the legislative um, houses, uh, powers and privileges, Act, yeah. that that's enough. But as it turned out, I thought we were debating. I'm sure they also saw the body language of some leaders. And then they told that line. When we were voting against, I heard some weak nay. I shouted from the top of my voice, because I am against it and I am strongly against it, even till now. I believe this is going to die on the streets. So someone told me that, don't even bother campaigning against it. The, the CLOs will kill it. But my voice must be heard. And, and, and that was clearly what I did. So I do not know what they need immunity 
for August. Your, your colleague has made the, the, the point about what happened in the 8th Assembly and the uh, challenges that the President of the National Assembly uh, faced during his tenure. Do you think that that case was strong enough to warrant an immunity for leaders, for presiding officers of the National Assembly? Yeah, maybe. But again, if we were in other climes, Sinezo Saraki would have been the President of Nigeria today. Yeah, because if anything, that made him popular. It was obvious that the executive were just taking on him. Me, you can say, well, maybe some of the problems were self-inflicted. Because they knew from the presidency from the one that when he got the Senate presidency that he wanted to be the president of Nigeria. So the next thing to do is to distract him. But I think, like I said, if he was in other climes, he probably would have been president of Nigeria today. Because you will take him out there, people will know what you are trying to achieve, then you make him unnecessarily popular. But here we play ethnic politics and tribal politics, and he's not zoned to his area, he's not uh, whatever, from which tribe and all that. You know? But in any case, I have always advocated for building strong institutions. What about the judiciary? If we have the rule of law in this country, we won't be discussing these things. We won't be discussing these things. So today, we are solving our problems in silos. And I don't think that's the way to go. Take care of the judiciary. All this will go away. Now, if you have a presiding officer and the executive says we don't like him, you charge him to court for with frivolous charges or anything. The courts are there to adjudicate. He wa okay, in the days of Saraki, the entire city, the entire National Assembly were with him. And then walk him out of it. Yeah, granted that he will be distracted, but that's why you have a deputy. The deputy will preside while you are away. If at the end of the day you come out without being convicted. What if they Makes have cases hero. against everybody? Because only recently, exactly. uh, the deputy, former deputy Senate president was just recently acquitted uh, for, I think he was charged for, I can't remember what precisely he was charged for. Forgery? But, yeah, forgery, yeah, for the rules, for forging the rules the House, of, the, of the Senate. Senate. <laughs> and only recently were those charges dropped. They said the lawyer ran away with the case file or something to that effect. So himself and his deputy both had cases. In that sort of instance, mm -hmm. as in, do you think is strong enough? Well, like I said, this is a problem today because of the executive. If we strengthen the institutions, for example, the judiciary, we will not be talking about these things. Mm. Now, we should be talking about making laws. Maybe have more courts, have more judges, dispense with cases expeditiously. For me, that's how to solve this problem. In Nigeria, we always believe because this problem has read its head today, we should look for a particular solution. But I believe in staircase approach. Go from the bottom. From whatever, we're talking about security problems today. Go to the bottom. If you have functioning local government, none of this will happen. Because you have functioning local government that will get their funds as it's released from, the, from, from Abuja. You will have healthcare system working. You have local government construct, constructing roads. The schools will be functioning. This so-called Boko Haram, are they falling from heaven? They are all coming from local government. So you even have contractors that are living on contracts from the local government. Everybody will not be running to Meduguri or Yubi or Damaturu. You stay in your local government and be doing business. Your kids can school there. And when you have issues, you go to the primary health care centers. But these things are not functioning in the local government. Everybody is moving to the center. People are going into crime. If we fix the institutions and get them to function well, we will not have the problems we have today. In a situation where you say, because there is a problem we must get a solution from the top is not going to work mm. so you have heard there i mean that he's, he believes that the case of the senate president and that of his deputy were not strong enough if there was anything and and truly that was the situation the members of the eighth senate uh, showed very strong solidarity in fact they took it as an attack upon the national assembly upon the institution of the national assembly and every time the senate president went to court at least most times we saw a lot of the members of the national assembly going with him to court of course not without criticisms uh from certain section of the Nigerian uh, of Nigerian people, but nonetheless, it was their their way of showing that this was not anything. Uh, this this really had no substance. It was more political uh, than real, so to speak. So, do you really think that, in the face of how we saw how the National Assembly handled that, is this really necessary? It's very very necessary. Unfortunately, we don't have celestial powers to predict the future. But from the happenings of today, we can now arrange tomorrow. 
if I use his own words, the Srakis uh, uh, matter is enough to tell us how do we handle tomorrow from what happened there. If Cham Sraki had gone to court, not less than 30 senators, 40 members will go with him. And that cripples sitting. Can we okay come by a law to say for any frivolous suit should be an impeachable offense on the presidency? So that we can check it. If you don't want that, can you guarantee that? We can turn around to say, should any prison officer be brought to court frivolously? It should be an impeachable offense. So they can be careful. Is it possible mm -hmm. also, because for some people, they're saying that this is coming at a time when uh, people are saying we shouldn't even have immunity for members of the executive. Maybe to have everybody on the same level playing field. Oh, fine. Maybe immunity should would be taken away entirely? for everybody. Sorry, I can also sue you for false prosecution. Why, why is that not the bill making the rounds? After all, it's supposed to be a constitutional amendment. I matter. agree with you. Why now, is that not the bill making it, the let rounds? Let us also forget if you remove immunity from Mr. President and Mr. Governor. Yes. Then they kind of, of course, they are not, I won't say they're angels. They are not. But you can now see that a lot of suits, I won't say embarrass them, will distract them. But time does not run out of crime. A private person can bring a criminal suit, I hope you know, in our uh, legal regime. Therefore, if I don't like the governor, I will make sure that I'll put the suit in a magistrate court B, all words over the state. He will have some will require his personal attendance. The wisdom in that is to leave them not to be distracted. Though, fortunately, other things distract them even more than that, unfortunately. So the wisdom of those who after the Constitution is to give them a kind of preference not to be distracted. But I'm afraid they're being distracted. So if you now further remove it, you can imagine what will happen. If time does not run out against crime, which you can pick on them, do your investigations. You wait for them. Pick them up. Now I challenge anybody go after Saraki. The reason why they're looking for him is expired. And nobody's talking to the presidency. Nobody's reprimanding them. There's no form of punishment to them. So we should also balance it. What is good for the presidency is also good for. We are talking about institutional framework. That lies the, within the, the powers of the National Assembly. If you're talking about balance, exactly. uh, the balance will be remove immunity for everyone. Wouldn't that be the balance? Okay, fine. Uh, the same thing we're asking for now. Let them allow us to go and tinker on that section. If I don't amend it, the amendment could be deleting it totally. Who is it let them allow? Who, is going, who should allow the members of the National Assembly? That is what we did now by passing the, the bill. You said let them allow us. Who should allow you? In now, politics. In, 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 in parentheses, the, the, the crowd, the, the polity, they should allow the civil society, like he said, should allow that debate now to get to the conclusion, for example. But you we have to propose it first. It's been done. No, no. The session now is seeking for amendment. Amendment may be now deleting that amendment, adding, restructuring, Tinkering with it. So now that we've provided it there, it could be amended positively or negatively. Mm. It could be amended in the line you are talking. But if you say don't touch it, it remains. So mm. it is proper that we are allowed to discuss it now. Now he's saying remove it there. By the time we go to discuss the amendment, that session at the committee level, such argument can come. Why not balance it by deleting it? But if you don't pass it, it won't be discussed at all. I want to show you how you know the dailies are reflecting the, the uh, what happened on the floor of the house yesterday. You see the reps okay immunity for Senate president speakers. That's how uh, New Telegraph is capturing it. Daily Trust says Nigerians reject immunity for Senate president speaker. Others say it's self-serving. Proposal triggers call for removal of immunity for president governors. So, I mean, if we go with the headline of Daily Trust, it will seem that a lot of Nigerians are not in tune with this. How do you hope to sell this to the Nigerian people? Correct. Because now we've been mandated to discuss it, public opinion now will, <laughs> will take place. Of course, before you amend or delete, you call for public hearing, public opinion. Therefore, you cannot delete. But if you, if you say, don't discuss it at all, the status quo will remain. So there is wisdom in passing the bill. There is wisdom in saying, let us talk about it. So second reading passage means, please go and look at that. Go and look at the amendment you, you are. Deleting it is an amendment, is it not? Yeah. So if you say don't talk about it, don't pass it like you had suggested, then we'll have opportunity to delete it. But now that we've said, 
passed it. I was of the view, pass it to the second reading so but we can go and look at it. Can you really afford, considering how a lot of Nigerians already feel about their lawmakers, can the House of Reps afford to have such a bill that makes Nigerians continue to look at members of the National Assembly as people who only go to serve their own interests? No, no, they are wrong. They don't understand the workings of Parliament. If you don't file for alteration, how do you delete it? How do you realize their own idea now. It hasn't come under uh, we want to delete it. No, it has no. come it under has to come we under want anyhow. to give our own no, members, no, no, no. our can't. own presiding officers this immunity it, as well. Politically, you must be careful how you play the floor of the house. I told you one thing when I opened up that those who asked for it now were those who voted against it in the last session. Therefore, it could be a clever way of saying let us talk about it again and remove it entirely. And if you don't put it on the table, you can discuss it. Mm, do you agree with him on that? No, exactly. Because mm -hmm. that was not the motive. Mm -hmm. That was not the motive. But I just say, in fairness to the speaker, he said it clearly. You know, Nemo Judah in Kasasua, I am, I cannot preside in my own cause. You know? So, and again, that if this comes into law, it's not going to be for the ninth assembly, maybe for the 10th assembly. So in fairness to him, he said that. Initially, he has even said that, look, I can't even preside over this if I'm going to benefit from it. So I give it to him. But the thing we are saying, this is not what we need now. We are talking about killings everywhere in the country. And people are talking about immunity for presiding officers. I'm still of the view that we should really take that immunity away from the, the executive. I have, I have searched. I have not seen anywhere in the world where presiding officers of Congress have immunity. I searched. Somebody was debating it yesterday and said that as it happens in other climes. I went to search. I didn't see it. So why are we different? Mm. So I don't believe it. And I believe Nigerians should come out and fight against this. In all honesty, I keep going back to the rule of law. The president, the vice president, the governors and deputy governors that are enjoying it today, they, they are distracted, like my colleague said here. A second term and things of the sort. You, you would know that, that yeah, from your state. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. You see, but the thing here is, you know, the thing with crime, over time, people tend to forget and take their minds away from it. If we have, if the courts are doing what they should do, this won't be a problem. I remember the guy that was supposed to take over from Barack Obama when he went to, when he became the president, the guy that was supposed to take over his seat, I think it was the governor of Chicago. From that seat, he went to jail. I believe if we are talking about amending anything, it should be how to lift the immunity from any of these people and join it today. So that if there's anything, they can begin to try them while they are sitting there and they can go to jail from there. That's how to set an example to the Nigerians you are talking about to avoid corruption. Immunity even allows corruption. If you are clean, if your hands are clean, why are you bothered about immunity? Like I said before, if the executive is harassing you, it makes you even popular. Mm. To, to say that people are looking at their back because somebody will harass them. So, let's grant immunity to Dangote. He's a juristic person. Dangote, as a company, is a juristic person. So let's grant him immunity so that nobody will distract him. He's the richest man in Africa. He's employed how many people? More people than maybe government. So he needs immunity. To me, that's not the solution. So whoever comes to equity must come with clean hands. If you are sure that you don't have issues, forget about immunity. Well, this is the situation right now. It has passed second reading, and of course, it has created an uproar, uh, as is expected. Uh, you are also going to be one of those who will be targeted, even though you've spoken. Mm. Nigerians oftentimes see all their members as one. Oh, yes, you know, course. so if this is killed second reading, mm. how are you prepared to face uh, the repercussions of this? Whatever it will be, whatever it will be. Yeah, well, I've always, I've always advise my colleagues because people believe we we're just discussing before we came on here people asking money for burial for wedding ceremony for another and nigerian students say well we are the highest paid legislators all over the world that's what they claim in the uk when you need to bury your parents you don't call member of congress you don't call member of parliament same thing in the us you don't call member of congress if you don't call them for school fees you don't call them for hospital bills. You don't call them when your roof is blown. So what I tell my colleagues, let's give attention, let's make laws that will empower the, the, uh, the people we, we represent. If we make such laws, if you have 
free primary health care for children and maternal for women. You will not have need, to, if anybody calls you to say, I am nowhere, an adult, you should be able to say, guy, get a job. But when you say, my child is nowhere, my wife is in delivery, or my wife is, uh, has issues, and she's carrying a baby, you will first panic, because you don't want anything to happen to them and anybody will blame you. Same thing with when somebody says, my roof is blown right now, rain is falling, and my, I'm here with my kids, and you want to do something. But in those climes that they compare us with, they don't go through all that. So my take is make laws that will take away some of these things. In the 8th Assembly, I had a bill that said that um, kids and children are wards of uh, uh, public servants should not school overseas. Because fix it, if you fix education, there will be no need for that. It went through second reading. What happened? The, the civil servants and my colleagues just slowed it down. One of me and my colleagues, the leadership. There was another one against medical tourism. So these are, again, it went through second reading, it never made it to Committee of the Whole. They, they will schedule it and then they will remove it again. If you have laws like this, it will take pressure away from you. So let's have laws that will save the people. I really don't care about what, how Nigerians see us right now. Because I'm a businessman. I just came into politics hoping that I will be able to change things. But it's not working. Mm. So I'm just going to do my bit and then Maybe go back to my business. Mm -hmm. Take it well, my take is people don't understand the workings of parliament, and we need to educate them. But your colleague is there. I mean, that, I, I, I'm coming. Yeah. Fine. That section that gives immunity from the totality of you gather the opinion of persons that don't want it, but you must bring it for discussion. Now it's before us. At the committee level, we'll call for papers. Bring it for discussion in this manner. No, no, no. Are you trying to pull the wool over our eyes? No, 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 no. I want to say, people are asking for immunity. I supported it, campaigned for it, giving you my reasons. But at the committee, they will call for a public hearing. People will now say, this is why we don't want it at all. But if you say don't discuss it at all, that means you are shying away from it. The question is, can you really afford, I mean, you, the goodwill that the House enjoys, it, sadly we don't have polls in this country, but if we were to look at the polls... have any goodwill. The, 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 exactly, you we know that goodwill. your goodwill is very scarce. Yes. So do you think that you can continue to afford, when you manage to build a little goodwill, can you really afford to sacrifice this on the altar of bills like this? Is there anything the public society had sent to us in form of memos that would not tow their line? Is there anything? We've always worked with them. So it's for them to feed us with the thinking, with their own opinion. So I'm even of the view that we should jettison the whole constitution. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the Vanguard this morning. I'm looking on the front page of the Vanguard. They have on their front page insecurity, gunmen go on rampage nationwide. Uh, they also have this story. Well, I'll focus a bit more on it when we come back from this break. Please stay with us. We still have with us in the studio Honorable Deacon Sergius Ogun, who represent ASAN Northeast and ASAN Southeast in Edo State. And we have with us Honorable Uzama Inkema Bonta, who is a former Chairman House Committee on Public Petitions. They're both current members of the Ninth Assembly. Um, we're talking about immunity, the immunity for presiding officers of the National Assembly, which scaled second reading yesterday. It's a matter of constitutional amendment. And of course, it's still a long journey. I think you can, you can always uh, you know, lead us through the path. As Assuming this, um, you know, is, is I think is now scheduled for public hearing in the House of Representatives. But it went through second reading on the floor of the House yesterday. It still has to go uh, to the Senate and, of course, uh, must go to the state houses of assembly. And, of course, well, let me not be the one to tell you. Let them tell you what the process will be. They are the lawmakers. Uh, Honorable, do you want to quickly t lead us through the process? It's a matter of constitutional yes, amendment. It's not being referred to the uh, committee that handles constitutional alterations. Okay. The committee will now call for public opinion, will now call for memo, will now look at it, and upon the conclusion it will return back to the House, it will be a reflection of the public opinion. What did who and who say? So what the public should now do is to send out their memos, send out their own arguments, send out their own views, which will now collate 
and reduce it to what are they saying? Yeah, the question will be how does how do you aggregate public opinion as to you know whether or not majority of the public are saying no they don't want this and if you have that will it have any effect on whether or not members still want it to go through? No, no, of course it has. It was always, we we now publish it and call for memos, call for papers, and people will confiscate and debate it. It's usually done. Whatever they say is collected and brought back to the house with two sides of it. This is what the majority said, he said this. And in all, I've participated in lawmaking for a long while, this is mm. my fourth year we had always reflected that. So I passed that bill, I joined in arguing for it. So we must discuss the immunity totally. What I'm saying is, how do you aggregate it? How do you know that majority of people, you know, said this and minority <coughs> said that? And does it have any effect on whether or not a bill will eventually sail through? Of course. We document, we, for example, we can invite channels, send us what you think on immunity. We'll invite the civil society, we'll, we, we, we'll publish in at least two papers. This is what we intend to do. Send us copies of your views. And we aggregate it and reduce it and, and, and then look at the conclusion. This is what majority said. And that's what he knows. That's the line we will talk. If the majority says, no, no, we don't want immunity for presiding officer, in fact, delete it all. If 20 persons came and President and 19 says, delete it all, it will so reflect that. that will, will, it, will it have any effect on the final decision? Of course. Yeah. It has, yes. Okay. It will have. So are you confident? I mean, skill second reading mm. is already causing an uproar. I, do you think you're already thinking that the CLOs will kill this? Uh, but what about the Senate? The, it still has to go to the Senate. It's a matter of constitutional amendment and maybe uh, the State House of Assembly as well. Do you think that it's going to survive there? I think it will. Because with the body language I saw yesterday, I'm sure the leadership are in support. I don't have any problem with their thinking, but I don't think that's the solution to the problem. That's just my take. Before I go into the chamber yesterday, funny enough, we just discussed with some colleagues, and they said, we came out with a resolution. The National Assembly came out with a resolution, or the House of Rep, saying that the service chiefs should go. We are, some of us agree that the problem is not just with the service chiefs alone, but you have renewed the attempts two times. This is about the third one. And somebody asked me, where is it in law, in our laws, that the president must drop the service chiefs? So what's the option left? If we have a resolution of the House or the National Assembly that the service chiefs should go, and the commander-in-chief is not releasing them, impeach him, section 143. But you dare mention that today. It would be a different thing entirely. Same thing with the governors. The so-called governors that have immunity and are misbehaving. Section 188, impeach them. But who does that in Nigeria? So it's easy to say, ah, immunity and immunity. Who does that? But that's, when there are infractions, take them out. So again, that is why I'm saying, I'm not in support of this immunity. There are other ways to resolve these issues. Mm. Strengthen the judiciary. Uh, just before we went on break, I said I was going to show you quickly how the Vanguard reflected uh, stories from the House of Representatives uh, today. You see on the front page, besides the major headline which has insecurity, gunmen go on rampage nationwide. They have this one, we deserve SUVs, not cars, for oversight function. That is on the front page uh, of the Vanguard and it is attributed to members of the House of Representatives. Uh, you also see the NLC, Sarah Pafeniferi, others kick as reps propose immunity for NAS, State Assembly's principal officers. So it would seem that you have two stories, or perhaps even more, which is showing that it looks like the House of Reps, uh, you know, is sitting for themselves this morning. You know, if I may react, fully from what you said now, if there are infractions, what do you do? Apply the law. If Mr. President refused to do the needful and preach him, is it the civil society now that is stopping us from doing the needful or stopping ourselves? That's what I'm saying that we do politics in a way that is not appropriate. You're talking about service to no, I'm talking right? about this particular story. Oh, well, we we deserve SUVs, not cars, for oversight function. Yeah, what do we make of that coming from the members of the House of Representatives? If you want to do oversight functions, oh. a field vehicle, if you ask me, need something like a helix to do with a bus uh, that can take people collectively, not really um, cars. 
Not good luxury cars. Not SUVs. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, not um, SUV yes. will pass. You need something like a hill or field cars. Sorry. I say SUV will pass for a good vehicle to use. But in the Senate, they already have the SUVs. It's only the house that you hear of this debate all the time. In the Eighth Assembly, by the time they were talking, ah, House of Reps said they wanted the Senate already have their Land Cruisers. I could ask Even you now, what? they already have their Land Cruisers. Okay, now, last time they gave us 508 Peugeot. It couldn't stand the test of time. By the time I got to Lokoja, my packed up. I didn't use it again. So Your car packed up? Oh, yes. That I'm telling you, 508. By the time I got to Lokoja, so the car packed up. It's a Peugeot 508. So if a he lost, I've been rugged to run around. That's what we need. Do we expect him to use my car to run around? So they criticize this thing without thinking. Mm. Let's go to Lagos now and take questions from my colleagues. Well, colleague, actually, but it's okay. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Honorable Nkemba Bota, you said earlier on that this is going to open up a conversation such that at the end of it, we'll decide whether we need to extend the immunity or delete that section altogether. But when we look at this bill, we see it is asking for something in particular. It is ask, asking that the immunity be extended to presiding officers of the National Assembly. So how will this bill achieve something it didn't even set out to achieve in the first place? Yes, it can. We are talking about amending a section to add. In discussing that section, the totality of it, you can also come to the conclusion that we don't need a toy, it should be deleted in its entirety. That is how house operate. You must not, if for example, I'm in the opposition now, I can approach a, a matter in a way that I don't want them to defeat it. I can come in a way that I can put it forward to you so that when we now gather, we discuss totality of that section. If the session could have A, B, C, D. If I know that it will not be harmless for me to introduce D, I can come by way of it. By the time we get to the committee, we will now or we were mandated to talk about A, B, C, D, because the totality of the section has been placed before us for alteration. It must not be that because we wanted to delete D, you cannot touch A or B. That is the workings of parliament. We had a cause to say, retain, delete, but you must provide that section for alteration. You must let it in what we're discussing. Otherwise, the committee or the, the assembly is forbidden from touching it at all. You may think it's a wrong way to bring it. No, I'm opposition, for example. I supported that bill. Say so yes, give them immunity, bring it. Then they, they are the larger section, including you. We expect the paper from you to tell us this is what we want, this is what we don't want. I will now collect, aggregate it and say, this is what the public are saying. If we represent the public, we'll obey their opinion. There's no other way to do it. But if you don't discuss it at all, the status quo remains. If you don't go there at all, the status quo will prevail. So for us to be sure we do the needful from what the public wants, we must bring it to the forum, we must bring it to the table to discuss. In a few hours, the, the Senate Committee on Constitutional Review is meant to meet. It's meant to be the inaugural meeting at the National Assembly. So what you're doing is seeking to alter uh, the Constitution. And what they're doing also seeks to achieve the same thing, perhaps on a much wider scale. So how does yours tie into this? Why not perhaps just drop this at their table for them to follow it through? It, it is a bicameral legislation. Senate will work, will work, will harmonize it. So I believe that the Senate are there to do their own bits, we will do our own. Thereafter, we'll do a conference. We'll send it. So the House are independent, or to say, of the Senate. We are doing ours, what comes before us to do. That matter now had scaled second reading before the uh, House now. Of course, the House, Senate, the House Committee on Constitutional Treasure will also meet and decide. And then we'll call for uh, papers and opinion from people, and we'll aggregate it and summarize it and pass for the Senate for concurrence. And in most cases, from my experience, we normally do a joint sitting when we've done far. We'll all do a joint retreat and discuss constitutional alteration. So we can come out with the opinion of the people. The people will present, will come to speak. In the last assembly, this matter came, it was topical, but people refused it. Those who are asking for it now or who are voting for it now refused it then. And the reason was that um, they don't need it for the same reason that people are also conversing now. And some of us felt that we don't even need it at all. 
at that year, uh, that last session I belonged to that committee, I was also of the opinion that we don't need it to be. We don't need that to come. We should be able to allow fair play and then do the needful. So because we respect some others more than some persons, and all animals are equal, but some are more superior. But if we decide to play by the rules, then we don't need that. And like my colleague said here, if you if you are free, if you if you are conscious, we don't need to wear any kind of immunity. But because a lot of things happen to, to people in different ways, with selective judgments and so on, that's why we thought that. But I think, let us allow the committees to meet and listen to Nigerians and do the needful. All right. Now, uh, uh, Honorable Sergio Sogo, earlier on, you, you talked about strengthening the institutions. And largely, this particular bill, the need for this bill has been uh, placed at the, at the desk of the fact that people believe that, you know, the presiding officers will be distracted. By the way, the Eighth Assembly was rated uh, as perhaps the most efficient uh, by some groups, saying that they passed a lot of bills. So I wonder how that distraction comes into play. But then you mentioned strengthening the institutions and you touched on the judiciary. So if this is largely a case for the judiciary, shouldn't we be focusing on the judiciary and ensuring that some of these frivolous suits and all that don't even come up or are not entertained in the first place. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. That's why I said strengthen the institutions, strengthen the judiciary. If we have a strong judiciary, we will not be taking this route. So I think what we are trying to do now is because that institution is very weak. So the next thing, let's, let's protect ourselves against future occurrence of what happened to the destiny president of the Eighth Assembly. But to me, that's not the solution. So if you have the rule of law, even those that have immunity right now, you can lift it and send them to jail from government house. All right, so uh, let me just tie this to uh, the discussion before I came in. And, and, it, it, and it talked about the perks of office uh, for National Assembly members. And I recall much earlier before the break, you were talking about people approaching you to pay for burials, for weddings, and what have you. And you mentioned that rather than have that, we should empower the people. But don't you think that's also as a result of the perks which people see uh, that are associated with the office, if I may, of representatives? Don't you think that should also be looked into, perhaps caught, such that you can tell people, well, this is how much I earn, so I can't possibly fund what you're asking me to fund? I agree with you also. I agree with you 100%. I, there was something that was trending on social media, I think it was sometime last week, of, uh, I think it was the Danish uh, Assembly, how that they don't get paid, or they get little or nothing, and and um, how I think they, they take public transport, they are not accommodated and all that. Some of us are in support of that. So if you if you have an if you are not paid and you volunteer to save your country and you are paid little or nothing, that's okay. So because I even think part of why people are most killing to get into any office in Nigeria is because of the perks. That is why I'm also against the immunity. I don't know if you take your mind back to what led to, I mean, leading to the elections of the election of the of the speaker, the Senate president, and all. A lot goes into that. In the Eighth Assembly, I heard that some people got money to vote. But in the Ninth Assembly, what happened is better imagined. You don't want to know what happened. There was no immunity then. Then, looking at the 10th Assembly, you now give them immunity with all the powers. Because the minute you become the Speaker or the Senate President, you have two, three BPs waiting for you outside. Bulletproof vehicles waiting for you. With uh, DSS personnel, policemen, and all that. Now you are adding immunity to that. Without immunity, you see the, the battle to get there. Which means you can literally do anything to be elected. The minute you are elected in the house, that is it. Even if you, you go and steal a bullion van of dollars, bring it to the National Assembly, buy votes, and you are elected, there's immunity. Nobody can try you. So I agree completely. I'm ready to do this work without being paid a dime. I'm not. I'm ready to do that. So let the constituent know that I'm not earning anything I'm your voice in Abuja. So 
Because really, now we are talking about fixing roads, light, water, is a failure of the system. Uh, I I'm wonder a lawmaker. If, uh, Why do you need to go and start fixing roads? What's the work of the local government? Oh, I, I wonder if Honorable Nkema Bonta agrees with you on that one. Now, he says he's ready to represent his people without being paid. Is that your position too? Vehemently opposed to that. I, I, I want to be paid for the work I do. Uh, but I want to be paid judiciously. I also want to be judiciously. I'm not going to be corrupt, but I want to be paid. I can't come to uh, do free work. I don't advocate for that. No, I'm not um, a for Christmas. But what I'm saying that um, uh, I justify the pay I also get. See, let me, let me tell you, a free pay may not be committed. If you work freely, you may not be committed to it. He's an oil magnet. He's placed in oil industry before he came here. So, and um, he has reasons to... To, to do that. And let me also tell you, you see, because of insecurity, I'm jeopardized in the work I do. The area he mentioned, they can walk freely, take public transport. I can't do that here because um, this security is much. And we are struggling to do security until we begin to do the needful. We can't have this security. Until if, if we say the judiciary is weak and we know they are weak, why can't we move against what makes them weak? It's possible. So the institution of not just judiciary is weak, the parliament is also weak because of politics. You're talking about service chiefs and all whatnot. Who are the service chiefs? Somebody begets the service chief. A commander in chief begets the service chief. Whatever is born of a snake must be long. You know? So we should also to do the needful. Uh, uh, and I challenge us to do it. You said that it assembly portrayed as the best of the parliament and so on. So it's also helped to challenge the night as him to do the needful until we begin to do, you see, we're looking at the immunity as if it's a big deal. There are a lot of infractions. The constitution also put in place what you can do for those infractions. The infractions are all over. We should exercise it. We should. I'm happy to be an opposition member now, but I want to do it credibly well, and I'm also doing that. And the ruling party should listen to us. So. Um, I like your sentiment, so, but we must be careful to do it well. If you look at our own institution, I mean the parliament, compared with other crime, I bet you, I don't think that what they put out in the street there is exactly the way, but we have negative perceptions because of the poverty around, because of the insecurity, because of the general condition that we find ourselves. Isn't that but, why um, the priority should be different? Yes. The, who defines the priorities? The leadership of the House, while opposition will try to beat them in line. And that's that what we're doing. No, because if we say that the members of, especially the House of Representatives, mm -hmm. you know, represent the people, and you agree with the, with the, with the people or with the general opinion mm -hmm. that poverty is rife, insecurity is rife, mm -hmm. you know, should immunity for lawmakers be the priority right now? Now, you are all considering saying immunity for lawmakers. If you don't put it, I repeat myself again. If you're in no opposition, you may seek of ways to get what you want done. It's a matter of methodology. What is not tabled for discussion cannot be discussed. Except you are hungry, you must go to a restaurant to sit down. It's when you get there, you decide what kind of food you want to eat. But you give otherwise, you cannot. So now, the matter is now before us appropriately to this discuss is, that section. This is a very interesting path to take. Sure. <laughs> a very interesting path to take to deleting, if, you, if that's not what you're arguing. If the majority says, yeah. you don't want it at all, mm -hmm. don't give the second person, you delete it. Mm -hmm. And we reflect it so. You know, only yesterday as well, we saw one of your colleagues on the floor of the House threatening to resign uh, from the House if, you know, the security situation is not looked into or if certain actions were not taken. He, he complained vehemently about super camps uh, that the Army had set up in Borno. I think he's also a member of the House Committee on the Army. Um, how, I know that the, the, the security, security was more on the front burner uh, for members of the National Assembly in general, and even the House of Representatives in particular, when you resumed from recess. How far has that discussion gone uh, to, for, for, f to warrant the sort of, uh, you know, uh, what would I say, postulation that your colleague came up with yesterday? The, my colleague who said that, said that sincerely. And I must tell you that the ruling party, the government are playing uh, politics with, 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 with security. 
we are not doing any security matter. Look, all the policies shows, all the policies of the present government shows that we're encouraging insecurity. Why renew the service chief's tenure? Of course, he's right. If they are doing well, go ahead. If they're not doing well, they said a fresh broom sweeps better. I don't know about the APC, but whether it's sweeping at all. So if you are keeping them when people are saying they're not doing well, it means you're enjoying what they're doing. Now, Boko Haram came out to threaten, and even said uh, the, the chief of staff should come to his village if he can. I mean, the army chief. They dared him to say, come to your village if you can. That means he can't go there. Sums of money is being voted to the military for all kind of things. What are they being used for? We don't even see it. Apart from that. Now, the question I'm asking is, where is that discussion in the House with regards to security, considering the fact that it's still I, making the I do the, not want to say pages. negative things about the House, because I'm a member. But sincerely, we've not done much to tackle security. I will quote my senator, who asked for the resignation of commander-in-chief, if he cannot put uh, good service chiefs. Because the commander-in-chief begat the service chiefs. And you're talking about the service chiefs and even the commander-in-chief. So the House should do something. Say, remove the service chief today or you go. Mm. We've not taken steps. We're, we're joking. We're not. I'm sorry, but I'm still in the House. So we must do radical positive things about insecurity. It's affecting us. We can't do anything. I'm supposed to be in oversight function today up north in um, one of the dams up north. And I told my wife, no, I'm not going to go anywhere of Abuja. I'm here. I asked, how are you going? They said that they have formal pools. <laughs> and I laughed at them. I'm from the Niger Delta areas. I know that say formal pools. I said, say, welcome. Go in peace. And I stepped back. That's insecurity. The way we're going to do is a serious function, an oversight function. So for us to talk about security, we must come down and discuss it thoroughly. Mm. We must look, OK, I understand that the, 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 you know, the, the um, 29 and 23 are all retired. Mm. This is the 32 uh, uh, class or something, class 32, mm -hmm. the service chiefs. Mm -hmm. I hear that 29, 30 or whatever are all retired. When they're 29, I think all, 32 has even retired. So what are we doing? Mm. Who is doing them? We also hear that retired or um, <laughs> repentant Boko Haram and can now join the army. Hmm. Or in the army. This is a very serious matter. Uh, and I also want to take your stance quickly on where we stand with security. He says the house has not been radical enough. What would you like to see? Yeah, I agree. But like I said earlier, the house that came out with a resolution that the service chiefs should go. The commander in chief is not listening. So I don't think you need immunity to get the commander in chief to listen. So if he's not doing that, do the needful. Maybe impeach him. But like I said, who is going to mention that today? I think, is this section 217 that allows the president to, to allow the military if there's an insurrection or whatever? The former governor of Edo State was over in Edo over the weekend, and he needed army to leave the airport to the occasion he attended. Who approved that? And yet we hear in theater of war that the, the military men are overstretched. But you have individuals, even Yahoo boys, going around with military or going around with army. So that's what I'm saying. There's a failure. When the head is sick, the body's in trouble. So I think we have done our bits, but we need enforcement. You can you come up with resolutions and, and bills. You've not concluded your bills. Is it not the executive that should implement? So Nigerians gave this present executive the mandate. What more can the House do to show just how pressing the issue of security is uh, for the citizens and, of course, for themselves? One minute silence every day <laughs> for, for people who are killed by Boko Haram. We stand up to do one, observe one minute silence and we sit down. If you add all the total of one minute we've had, it's up to more than one year. Yeah. Silence for so people. I'm, I'm asking what more you can well, do. Not, what more we can do is to carry to the letter our yeah, resolutions. Conclude it. If you resolve it, the service chief should go. If they are not going, you know what to do. You conclude it. That is one. We need restructuring. We also need, yeah. if possible, state police. We need state security. Let us not be fooling ourselves. 
For example, with the coming of Am Amuteku, or whatever they call it, mm -hmm. I do not think they will have serious attacks. They know who is who. And now, we can't even tell who is a Nigerian. Honorable, I wish we had more time for this particular matter, but we have to say thank you to both of you for coming on Sunrise Early this morning. Honorable Dickens said just Ogun represents Asa Northeast and Asa North Southeast in Edo State, and Honorable Uzama Inke Mabonta, former chairman, House Committee on Public Petitions. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us this morning on Sunrise Daily.